Yep. This is Women right. Cures Song of the Everything. Week. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. This is Living Part of Life. Eric okay. Church, 2007 Sinners Like Me album. Uh, look, I've loved Eric Church since he since he started. Um, he is he's a fantastic entertainer for one. Like if you've never seen him live, you need to go see him live. He's great. Uh, first concert that my daughter ever went to. Dylan uh, got to see him when she was two years old. It was it was on this tour. He played at the Walmart parking lot in Olive Branch. I remember that. They were doing like a CMT or CMA Fest, uh, Road to the CMA Fest thing. Him and Craig Campbell. Uh, but man, I saw him at the, uh, I saw him at the Gibson Lounge. I guess it was way back when in Memphis. I, I saw him open first time I ever saw him was opening for Leonard Skinner uh, at Snowden That's Grove cool. Amphitheater down yeah. in South Haven. Um, I've seen him at a bunch of different festivals and whatnot. This dude went out and worked his rear end off. He is a fantastic songwriter. He is a showman. I mean, the dude is a country artist, and he played like ACDC and Pantera and all sorts of different stuff. Yeah. It's it's a show, and it's fantastic. So, Eric Church, Living Part of Life. Go check that thing out on the playlist over at the website, winningcureseverything.com. <sighs> Let's jump into the hot takes. Saturday Down South put out a story about 10 games in the playoff era that did not matter at all, and it struck me as a little odd. So, my hot take for this week is, yes, every single college football game does matter. Here's the 10 examples that they used, all right? UCF's entire 2017 season, 2017 Auburn's loss at LSU, 2017 Georgia's loss at Auburn, 2017 Clemson's loss at Syracuse, 2016 Penn State's win over Ohio State, 2016 Washington's loss to USC, 2016 Michigan's loss to Iowa, 2015 Michigan State lost to Nebraska, 2014 Oregon's home loss to Arizona, and 2014 Ohio State's 14-point home loss to Virginia Tech. Now, they didn't even mention Alabama's loss to Auburn last year, or Oklahoma's lost to Iowa State, etc. But look, Gene Stallings, former Alabama coach, used to say this. If you don't think the small games are important, see what happens when you lose one. The deal is, because these teams did not lose other games, that game still mattered, but if they had lost one more, if they had lost something else, it's set up differently. These games set up rankings and set up things to be... Like, to go forward, right? All of them but one. Every single loss sets up what may happen the next week. All of them but one. Which one? The entire UCF season. Look, the, we can get into that later on because... Or actually, is that going to be your hot take? No, it's not that, my hot take. No. Okay. No. Okay. My take's not even football related. Well, we'll talk about something like that in Factor Fiction. But it, look, the deal is, UCF, I understand they didn't lose a single game. But they had the number, even after playing Auburn, they had the number 72 strength of schedule in the country. Not to mention. uh, Let's go down this road then. How many teams do we know that they tried to schedule that wouldn't play them? Because Memphis, in that conference, had a game scheduled this coming season with Mississippi State. Mississippi State saw Ole Miss come into Memphis two years ago, get that tail whooping sent home. They saw... Uh, UCLA come into Memphis, get that tail whooping sent home, and immediately picked up the phone and said, uh, we're buying out of this contract. We're not coming to Memphis, and we're not playing you at all. Thanks. Goodbye. They are playing them next year. And they go find a high school team. They're, they're going to play them next year, but, 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 but not this Mississippi year. State is going to play at Kansas State this year. Yeah, but so that's the deal. But no, but hang on. You can't. Why can't they play both? One's not even a Power 5 team. Why are you scared of non-Power 5 teams? Well, one, because it makes you look bad if you lose. <laughs> because, because it makes you look bad if you lose, and you don't want to lose. You want to make easy schedules. I just don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I still I still They can't say control their schedule every, because they can't control other teams allowing them to go play them. Every single game matters in that, college football. It here, does. Here's wh- because it sets up the, the placard. It sets up whatever for... Everything else. So Alabama losing to Auburn set up Auburn to be number two in the playoff ranking when they played Georgia the next week. Like, had Auburn not beaten Alabama, it would have been Alabama and Georgia. 
And then at that point, do you have Alabama and Georgia playing the first round of the playoffs? Or do you have Alabama uh, no, beating Georgia? No, because if Alabama beats Georgia in the SEC tournament, then Georgia's now got two losses. And they're knocked out of the playoffs. And they're knocked out of the playoffs completely. That's what I'm saying. Every game matters. That I, I It here's sets the deal. up something else down the road to make it – like Auburn's loss to that, LSU. That whole every game matters thing – has got to be one of the dumbest philosophies of trying to claim a champion I've ever heard in my life. We care so much about games against high school teams or, or non-important games early in the season in August and September that it makes things that happen in December and January not important. And that's what I don't like. That's something that I – it's another thing that I hate about college football is September matters so much – that it doesn't give a damn what you do in November or December. You and win see, all those I don't, games. I don't necessarily buy that because Ohio you, State, even though they lost at or they lost at home to Oklahoma last year, even if you lose to Oklahoma, if Ohio State wins out, if Ohio State's name but, is not Ohio State, that doesn't happen. Gary, see you you forget that the only people that get exceptions to these are these big blue blood schools. Hold on. And everybody let's, else let's look gets at this. treated differently. If Ohio State beats Oklahoma last year and then Oklahoma loses to Iowa State like they did, does Oklahoma still get into the playoff at 10 and, or 11 no. and 2? No. Does Ohio State then get into the playoff even with a 35-point beatdown at Iowa if they've only got one loss? Yeah, because they've only got one loss. That doesn't mean that game doesn't matter. They only lost one game. That's what I'm saying. But the game two years matter. Ago, two years ago, when Ohio State lost to Penn State, okay, and Penn State got left out, they reference this, and and Ohio State got left let in. Okay, Ohio State got let in strictly because they're Ohio State. I swear before, and there's no way to know this because well, we can't go back. But there's absolutely no chance on earth any other school in any other conference would have gotten left out if their names not. Oklahoma, Alabama, USC, Notre Dame, Ohio State. Like, that's just it. Clemson's probably now in that window now. But but that's just it. We live in a world of the haves and the have-nots, and Penn State's been a have-not for the last decade. And so, you know, they're good. They're LSU. They're, they're up there. They're in the conversation with the big boys, but they're not Ohio State big. Okay. And so, therefore, no, no, no. You, you still play at the kitty table. You go sit over there. You don't belong here. I think you're jumping into a different section than what I'm talking about. Like, I, I am... I don't care that every game matters. I wish that. December mattered. <laughs> I want a 16-team playoff. And if that means August and September doesn't matter, I don't give a damn. You you want that to matter more at the end because of the season? Because I want to play sense. it out on the field. I want UCF to be able to get in there and say, UCF, you're the littlest guy at this table. You get to 16 seed. Congratulations, you get Clemson number one. Go beat them. Okay. And if they beat them, then we all shut up. And if they don't, oh well. We had a great tournament. Yeah. No, you're you're right about that. So I the fact that every game matters is one of the most pointless arguments I've ever heard in my life. That I we care about college football every game mattering. Let's uh let's see if we can find what the uh what the CFP ranking was. Do you remember? Uh, I don't. I don't even know what the CFP ranking is. Well, I was just curious about. You were talking about a sixteen-team playoff. Um, oh, that's what I did. Two thousand seventeen. Oh yeah, you were looking at eighteen. We don't have that yet. I'm quite certain yep. that Clemson, Alabama, and Ohio State are in it. If we have a two thousand eighteen one already. Yeah, I'm sure they probably are. Let's see college football polls and rankings for week sixteen of last year. Here we go. That's uh, that's the final rankings. That's not what I wanted. We need week, week 15. Bam. All right. So, uh, what we had was, number one, Clemson would have been playing number 16, Michigan State. Perfect. That's a that's a fun game. Nobody's going to be upset. Number two, Oklahoma would have been playing number 15, TCU. Ooh, Oklahoma better have that Got butt clinched. Hold, hold on. No, 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 because Oklahoma beat the crap out of it. They, they would have swapped up the rankings on this. It would have been like Oklahoma and Notre Dame. So, we'll put Notre Dame at number 15. They're number 14. Number three, Georgia against number uh, 14, TCU. Number four, Alabama against number 13, Stanford. Number five, Ohio State against number 12, UCF. 
Number six, Wisconsin against number 11, Washington. Number seven, Auburn against number 10, Miami. And then USC and Penn State in a rematch of the Rose Bowl. How, how would that not have been unbelievable? Every college football fan in the world says, hey, give me that. Yeah. Give me that right now. Give me that. I'd take it. Can we do that right now? Can we do that for 2018 how, right now? How mad would you have been that LSU was number 17? No, we, we don't deserve to be in that conversation. I have no problem so, with it. So that. then does Michigan State, Notre Dame, TCU, Stanford? No, I, I don't care. Here's the deal. It, it, I'm not going to play this. If we make it 16, somebody's going to want to make it 20. No. If you don't make the top 16, you just get left out. And okay. if the 16 seed wins the national championship, I'm not going to say, well, LSU was 17, and had we got in because of politics, we might have won it. Yes, we might have. But we couldn't make the top 16. So I'm not going to be upset about that. Okay. But you know what I am upset? We got an undefeated team that didn't even get a chance. And when they got a chance to play somebody, they beat the crap out of them. They didn't just beat them a little. They well, beat I mean, them they, a lot. They beat them by a touchdown. But they dominated the entire second half of the football game. Yeah. no, They, they, they controlled every statistical qu- uh, category there is to control. Yeah, you're right. You're right. They dominated the football game. All right, so my hot take still sticks. Uh, people may tell you otherwise, but the bottom line is every single college football game does matter. What's your hot take? My hot take has nothing to do with football. That's all right. Right now, I'm living in a glorious time in sports, <laughs> even when football is not playing, <laughs> because I love this Boston Red Sox team. My hot take is this. 182 game season. We're halfway through the season. They got the best record in baseball, and it's not even close. We record this on Sunday evenings, and and this past week they're playing out of their mind. They might not lose again. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm You're just so telling your you. Hot take if, is that the Red Sox are not going to lose again. If something crazy <laughs> happens, just know that you heard it here first. This team might not lose again. Mookie Betts, he could easily be the best player I've ever watched in my entire life. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm looking it up now. I'm going to see what, what they did today. Oh, Jackie Bradley Jr. made a play in the outfield that would make old school uh, David Jones. What was that dude's name? Is it David Jones? Who was the, the – Andrew, Andrew Jones. Jones for the Braves, who was like the best center fielder I've ever seen in my life, make like diving catches. He made a play into the wall today. Nobody in baseball could have made. Nobody. He is the only player that could have caught this ball, and he did. And the pitcher is standing there just in complete awe saying, I, I, that, was an, that was an easy stand-up double. All right, so yeah, 3-0, yeah, okay. No. They're, they're just – they're hitting when they need to hit. They're, they're hitting home runs at an obscene rate. Everybody <laughs> is doing just amazing things. I love, love, love this team. I just love it. The thing that upsets me most is Rafael Devins, the uh, the third baseman that's a stud young kid. He's on the DL, but it's 10-day DL. He should be okay. But uh, I love this baseball team. When When is the last time they lost a game? Uh, they lost a couple of nights ago. They were in a, a series battle, and they won With three, who? three or four. Uh, it might have been Minnesota they were playing. Minnesota now in a four-game series. They might have won, lost one of those four. Okay, on yeah, on Thursday they lost uh, two to one. Yeah, yeah. All right, swapping. but other than that, they uh, let's see, they beat the Orioles. Uh, there, no, the Orioles there, beat them. What's their overall record right now? Let's see, Boston's give overall me the standings. record, give me, and then give me the Yanks' record. Seventy four and thirty three is yeah. Boston. No, oh, that's good. That's, that's a lot. Of that's way on up there. There, the Orioles won't win seventy four games all year. Oh no, that not a chance. No. Not a chance. I mean, uh, the Yankees are sixty seven and thirty seven. They. They are almost 10 games better than the Yankees. And think about how good the Yankees are. That's pretty far out there. That's pretty far out I, there. Where, where are we as far as standings go? Uh, we're, I mean, we're getting close to the end. You know, the season uh, ends. Well, no, no, no. I, I got that. I'm, uh, let's see. Boston's got the best uh, best record in the American League. They got the best record in baseball. And it's not close. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not close. It's not close at all. It's not close at all. 74 and 33. Whew. And we still got two months to go. You realize brother. they're thirty-seven and nineteen, like away from home. Yeah, no, they, it don't matter where they play. This team pitches well, plays unbelievable defense. They might be the best defensive team in the league, and they can hit with anyone. 
the uh, the best. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. The best five records in baseball are all in uh, in the American League. in the American League. Oh yeah. Oh, that's not that's not a question. That's crazy. The Indians, the Astros, and the Yankees. I know are all, and I don't know who the fifth one would be. I have kind of jumped off because you know I'm you're a Cardinals fan, fan and, and they're struggling. They are uh, they are definitely doing that. They're fifty three and fifty one. They fired Mike Matheny. Uh, all right, so yours is uh, the Red Sox may not lose again. <laughs> that, that, they're not going to lose again. You want a hot take? I got a Skip Bayless hot take for you. The Red Sox may not lose Red another Sox game. Might not lose again. Well, in, in that same vein, <laughs> the Cardinals may not win another game. So <laughs> no, we'll just lose. see what happens. We'll we'll go from there. All right, uh, we'll close up shop with uh, with Factor Fiction next. <laughs> 